Welcome to our two-year anniversary episode, and what better way to celebrate than having an epic shootout between our P200 and our Orange Stella. Oh man, I hope you're as excited as I am, because today's episode is going to be so good. Not only do we celebrate two years of that scooter thing and 32 episodes, but we will finally have a shootout between our Orange Stella and our Grey P200E. And the playing field for this is fairly even. We have both bikes with engines that are based on a 200. We'll have on one side a 221 Molossi in the Orange bike, and a 225 Panasco in our Grey P200. Both bikes run aftermarket wheels, aftermarket suspension, and disc brakes, and they have the same tires. But to top it all off, we didn't just compare them anywhere. We went to the GNG Cartway in Camden, Ohio, and compared both bikes in six different categories. These are style and sound, riding comfort, how well they handle, their ability to pop wheelies, how fast they accelerate, and eventually a full lap on the track. So with no further ado, let's get into this epic battle. Round one. All right, right off the bat, this category is already kind of unfair for me because I I love the look of both bikes. We spent two years with them, so it's kind of hard to pick. Um, so this is where I call out you, the viewer. Why don't you, in the comments down below, tell us which one you prefer? But overall, this doesn't prevent us from you know listening to them because they both sound awesome. So because it's so hard to pick, we'll give both bikes a point for this category and we can move on to the next one. Round 2! Now first off, the Stella is a super comfortable bike. Uh, it has an aftermarket seat with no bar in the middle. You can slide around and position yourself and you can sit on it all day and your butt never hurts. We have done trips of over 270 miles a day on this bike and it was fine. Not so much on the P200. When you ride that thing, you really pay the vintage tax. It has a thick metal bar in the middle that even when you slide back and forth into the side while riding a bit more aggressively, it's always in the way and you end up just sitting on it. So there's really only one sentiment I can express towards this. Yeah. Therefore, this point goes to the Stella and puts it in the lead. Round 3! The suspension on the Stella is pretty good in itself. You can adjust the front as well as the rear to your needs. Combine that with pretty good stock disc brake setup and these awesome Heidenau K80s uh, on Pinasco tubeless rims and you always have a really good idea where your front wheel is at. In order to reduce vibrations we left the original rubber bushings in the engine cases and you can really feel those they are mellow and the entire engine really twists itself in the frame when you take more aggressive corners especially accelerating out of corners 
and therefore it was really hard to judge where I was at uh, once in a while. So there were a few situations where I found myself going a little off the track. On the P200, all that work that's been put into suspension and brakes really pays off. The combination of the 4-piston Pinasco caliper in the bottom and the 12mm radial master cylinder at the top makes it so easy to dose when you want to brake. You can brake with, with a finger on the track without any issues and you can find your point so smoothly. And once you are in the corner, it is that shortened Stain Cycle Works fork that puts the entire front of the bike lower and it feels like it's on rails. And then once you reach the point of acceleration, you can just rip it. You got the good grip from the Heidenhaus combined with these red Pinasco polyurethane engine bushings to prevent twisting of the engine in the frame, which means harder and faster acceleration out of your turns. And what eventually makes the bike faster, right? It, it just feels so good to ride. It is a joy and a blast and you don't want to get off. Except, you know, if your butt hurts because of that stupid seat. Therefore, hands down, without a doubt, this point goes to the P200. Round four. Of course the P200 wheelies, that 225 Pinasco just has so much power. However, it doesn't wheelie that easy. It is because the geometry of the bike changed when the fork was lowered. You can go hard on the throttle without the front wheel coming up. It cuts a little bit on the wheelie fun. In contrast, the geometry of the Stella really makes that 221 just lift the wheel up when you want it. Despite it having a box exhaust and lower peak power. It makes you want to show off maybe a little bit too much. So, well, to my surprise, I gotta give it to the Stella on this one. And that puts it into the lead once again. Round 5! So in order to have a fair comparison, I took both bikes to a flat stretch of road and rode them back to back from the same spot down the same stretch and compared how fast we could get from 0 to 60. With a few seconds difference, the P clearly wins this one and ties us up again leaving the final result to a head-to-head -head time attack on the track. Final round! With a full second of difference, it is the P200 that's taking this one home. Alright, maybe in this uh, six category comparison, the P200 won and the Stella lost, but in my heart, they're both winners. Really, no one lost here. 
Both bikes are great. Both bikes ride phenomenally well. And despite having um, rather different engine setups, this comparison was way closer than I expected. They're both pretty fast on the track, where power is not everything. Uh, it comes down to handling, it comes down to acceleration out of the corner, where the Molossi 221 kind of is better because of that box exhaust. But then when it comes to high RPM power, that, that, that 225 Panasco just screams and goes and goes and goes. So they, they both excel in their own way. And the best part about it is they're both in my garage, so I can ride them whenever I want. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. I This was more of an experiment. Next season, I want to pit more bikes against each other. We're going to have a lot of fun next year. And looking back, it's crazy to think that we've been doing this for two years now. We just passed 5,000 subs. We uh, have overall over half a million views on our YouTube channel. We grow every day on Instagram and on Facebook. And none of this would be possible without you, the viewer. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Thank you. But this doesn't mean that we're going to stay stagnant. Um, we've been developing new formats for next season and 2019 can come soon enough. Because there are big things to come. I hope you enjoyed today. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Where we're going to rebuild an SS180 engine.